present some very exciting news. We actually got a long-awaited standard approved at the 39th sitting of the court head. That standard is specification for cement. You would recall that we have had a number of problems with trading of cement in the region of late. And so CARICOM requested that a standard be developed for cement. And that standard has been on the development from as far back as 2007. And um, we finally got consensus throughout the member states for the adoption of a cement standard that all cement being traded within the region would need to conform to that the specifications of that standard. However, the standard, as we know, is voluntary. And we are hoping that member states would take it and put in the necessary legislative framework in place to cause mandatory adoption of that standard. Right? In other words, we're looking to see if it can be developed into a technical regulation. And if that is the case, then it means that no standard that does not meet that standard, that there's no cement, sorry, not meeting that standard will not be able to enter any of the member states. That's the intention. I know that the, the, the industry is very happy for it because they have been, it has been a long time in coming and they've been asking for that standard for a very, very long time. And so I'm happy to, to, to announce that the approval of that standard as a regional voluntary standard. Okay, you mentioned some of the challenges. What are some of the challenges you would have had in terms of getting um, Well, you know what, the standard development level? process calls for consensus. Right, it and it all means it. What what it was a, it was challenging in the sense that you had you have um, member states using different st different standards. For instance, in Suriname, the standard the, the standard that they they would have produced the cement to would have been the, the British standard, the the European standard, the EN standard, and the other member states would be using the ASTM standard. And so you needed to get some form of um, how you call it um, equivalence okay. right between between the two standards and that is where the, the challenge we had the challenges right being able to get to strike a balance between the Europe because although you might have similarity between those standards right the European Union standard and the ESTM standard they, they would there would have been similarity but they would, or you would have to establish equivalence because they really and truly were not the same. And so that was our biggest challenge, right? And so what we actually did to, to, to overcome the challenges, we actually adopted a new modality in terms of the standards development. First time we have ever done that, where we just reference those international standards to be used. And so statements conforming to those international standards would have been deemed to conform to the regional standard. Okay. And that we were able to take care of both the European market and the, the American, the American standards. Okay, what are the chances of using this mo modality for other standards in the well, future? Well, it is, it is, it, there, there, the possibility does exist wherever we would have a similar kind of situation, we could actually use it, you know, and, and the thing about it is, is the, the great acceptance by member states of that modality, you know, that was, that was the, the interesting thing about it, you know, because we only decided to do that early on this year, and it is like, like, August this year and to send it around for acceptance. First of all, the Technical Management Committee had to approve of it and they, they, they did and then we sent the standard around, the revised standard around to member states and they all accepted within the shortest possible time because we really wanted to get that standard approved at the 49th court end. And I need to say thank you to all the technical officers of the various bureaus who made it possible, as well as the trade officials who accepted the recommendations of the technical officers from the, the National Standards Bureaus. So I say a big thank you, as well to the Council of Directors of the, the CrossQ, right, for making it possible as well. The other standard that we, we got a, a approval for was a code of practice for organic production and process. Organic um, production was is something new in the region and people are recognizing the various the immense um, opportunity available right in that area. 
when the standard started, it started as code of practice for organic foods. Now the codex do have a standard for organic foods, so that the standard is based on the codex alimentaria standard. However, in the various iterations of the, of the standard, again that standard goes back as far back as 2009. All right, and so and we got a number of comments, and in trying to address the comments, every time you go back to the drawing board, you realize other things comes up, and so it was realized that it's not just about organic food production it is basically about tool. organic production for certification so it means that their products their organic products can now be certified against using that standard all we need to do now is to develop further relationship with a certification body right and be able to we're hoping that we can do it regionally and i know that jamaica was very interested in that in going that way and in establishing a certification program so i'm hoping that we could develop a regional certification scheme whether the certification be provided by jamaica the ncbj right or the bureau of standards of jamaica and so it could extend to the wider career the wider career and so we would have the, the products um organically produced products being certified against against that code of practice.